Well, um, um, the floor is yours, uh, Virginia. Uh, does money still matter? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not after this, no. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a curious question, isn't it? It's, um, I was thinking about it, you know, it's like... It, Terence was speaking and I wanted to speak first because you can say those things first, right? Um, <laughs> but um, so it's, a, it's like saying... Um, sure. You know, art historians aren't meant to sort of get emotional or talk emotionally about paintings, which seems to be a bit sad. But it's like saying, um, you know, does love still matter or does joy still matter? Um, in both cases, you know, I mean, it's quite clear uh, from talking to people going to these exhibitions or people who've been that, that, um, that they have, people have joy in front of these paintings. Um, I, when I was writing Mona, which took an immense amount of time. But when you say, what do you do? I said, I'm writing a book on Monet. Everybody says, oh, I love Monet. Now, now, one could think of that as just being, you know, oh, he's, he's pretty, he's beautiful. And that there has been a long, long, long history of thinking he was superficial. Um, you know, choosing gorgeous sunsets and things, and, you know, beautiful colors and so on. Um, but people, I, you know, get genuine pleasure out of this. And I was thinking, what, what is it? I mean, there is a, you know, we have to remember, of course, um, going right back to, to, to the days when they were first exhibited, and people hated them. Mm -hmm. Now, we all think, oh, you know, 19th century critics and 19th century people stupid, they, they didn't think, um, you know, they didn't appreciate them, which they did, they got round to, yeah. to it fairly quickly. Uh, but the abuse that all the Impressionists got um, w w was dreadful. Um, but I think it was important to think those 19th century critics in some ways were absolutely right because they were finding new ways of looking at the world, um, you know, not looking at a human being with lines around them and nice modelling. Um, you know, they might break that whole human being up in, into... Um, strokes of colour that melt into the surrounding colour. That's pretty radical. Mm -hmm. I mean, Turner did it to an extent too, but he also, you know, managed that with grand subjects and so on. Um, but I, I, I was, you know, I keep coming back to, you know, what, what is the love? And you know, of course, it extends to to some beautiful paintings of Renoir and, you know. Terence and I get, get steamed up about Pizarro, who is utterly wonderful. Mm. Uh, and, um, but I think one th thing about them, quite apart from the fact that they, they treat pleasurable subject matter, people in the country, people having picnics, people boating, um, in, you know, off, very often beautiful weather, you know, pretty awful weather too. And remember that you know, they all sat out in the snow and painted. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think one of the things that, I th that is, is so important, and what Terence said about going to this exhibition, everybody has their, their own way of seeing. And I think, I, I can't, can't find the right word, word for it, but it, it's an immensely democratic kind of painting. Mm -hmm. um, the painting, you know, before that, and, and I'm generalizing hideously, but um, there was long preparation for paintings and the paintings were sort of finished at the end and polished up so you couldn't see as it were very often what the under parts of the, the painting was were um, but here you, you can see as it were right from the bottom up and you, you can see you know the layers of color you can see Monet adding say you know but that amazing painting of the the, the flaming um, haystack um, he's built it up so deep that there are kind of channels on each side. He's put a little kind of stripes of bright orange paint in that channel. Now, so, so he's le leaving it open to us to sort of ex to participate in that. It's almost mm. allowing us to think, yeah, well, I know how to do that. It's, we can't, but, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, it's a very um, welcoming sort of painting. And I think, think that's part of the, the joy of it. Um, I just wanted to mention one painting in the picture in, in, in the exhibition, which I, I, th I think the other thing, every time you see a Monet and you see it again, you see it again, you see something else, as you said, 
Um, absolutely. Um, the little painting, the two paintings of snow, and there's one at Argenté, which I, it just gives me such a thrill. And I, um, a very grey day, everything is grey and white and silvery. And then, it sounds a bit silly, but on, then you've got the, the flakes of, of snow. And it's quite childish, you know, what, what do you do with flakes of snow? You put on blobs of white and on top of the, the canvas. Well, of course it's on the canvas, because all the paint's on the canvas. But somehow, you tend to think that the, there's space. Mm -hmm. There isn't. Mm -hmm. It's flat. Um, but I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with those snowflakes. I don't know what you saw. Um, so, so he in, almost, in, you know, the, the fact that we can see the brushstrokes draws us into that kind of exploration of, you know, the miracle that makes. I, I, um, I, all, all painters have done, all, you know, since the Renaissance, you know, have done this of creating space and forms in space, and it's massively exciting to think about how we see that and so on. But here they, they leave the process open. No, it's the, uh, it's the, this invitation, I think what you said is so important because there are close views of money and there are distant views of mm -hmm. money, and we're all fascinated by what happens in the disparity between seeing something from very close home and stepping back from it, because we see an image which breaks up, and we see an image which comes together, and we're imaginatively drawn in to the uh, breaking down of the image and the building up of it, and, and I love that you say that that's democratic, because I... Yeah. I think that's a lovely, a lovely notion. But, uh, I wonder if um, other members of the uh, panel will have the comments um, or responses to Virginia. And um, you know, I'm really heartened by by your obvious passion and emotion for for the art because um, sometimes you feel, as a, as an art historian, that you don't have that permission. And um, mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it did survive the book. It did survive, it did survive book. the book. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I'd have to say that that was my mother. And um, when I was originally commissioned to do this book, it was supposed to be 60,000 words and finished in 18 months. Um, and she had to live through an awful lot of that. It took 10 years. And I, I, I did actually do a word count because it was pre-computer. <laughs> but I forgot it, it was so, so gross. And then before, when I finally sort of handed in, they asked me to remove 40,000 words. So I, um, and quite rightly too, <laughs> I said, I'll give you a bag of words. <laughs> <laughs> but no, because every time you see them, they're different. Same with Cezanne, same with all of them. Same with any good painting. Uh, Julie, Emily, do you have any comments at all? Or any, any points you want to make at this point? Or? I guess I was interested to hear about um, the response across the Atlantic to Monet in comparison to the response across the English Channel also to Monet, which was really so much slower, wasn't it? Isn't that true? I, my understanding of it was um, in terms of the accession of, a, of a, an oh, Impressionist yes. painting by the National Gallery in London um, the furthest they were prepared to go in modernity was Boudin, not Monet. Um, uh, which, in fact, Australia, Melbourne were quicker, I understand, in terms of responding to um, Impressionist painting. But, uh, what they could have bought. <laughs> <laughs> but they were there yes. in it. Was, was it a Pizarro? 1897. Yes. That's, that's wonderful. Yes, wonderful. That, that was, I don't know, some sort of freak. It was very early, I thought, <laughs> Australia was yeah. also responding. There was a long drought after that. <laughs> <laughs>